Hey, so a lot of us, you know, we look up at the sky and we just see a bunch of dots. Um, but those are stars, y'all. Those are entire other solar systems, potentially. Um, and obviously we know which ones are too big or too small to create life, but they're still solar systems. And, and the ancients have been looking up since time immemorial. That's their job. During the day they lived life, during the night they looked up and, you know, spread mythology and stories about these stars. So this book, The Stars by H.A. Ray, he's the one who really helps visualize the ancient way of viewing the stars. You see the bear, you know, that just looks like nothing. But right here we see an eye and the mouth right here. That looks more like the bear, Ursa Major. And right here, Boades, it doesn't look like some dude at all. But right here, it looks like a guy in a cap with a pipe. That's the hat, the body, and the legs. And the, these stars are all, you know, you can Google Earth this stuff. I'm just using this book. Um, you know, from like the 50s, 60s, I think it was made. Um, and it's totally accurate. It's what I use today. The Virgo Virgin, I don't know why that's not connected because when you connect it to there, it's a head. It looks like a woman even with a dress. It's a bigger hips, which indicates a female, which is always the Virgo Virgin. Okay, we look at Hercules. Like, what the heck is that? It looks like a spider. Like, this is Hercules. Same stars shown, just... They don't connect it right because A, they don't know archetypes. B, if they did in their Illuminati, they're purposefully hiding it. This is Hercules. Okay, this is Pegasus, not whatever this is. These are the same exact stars, but these are the shapes that the ancients were seeing. And that's what we need to be seeing. This is Cetus or the whale. See right here? Very interesting. See, there's our Ursa Major right there, the great bear. Okay, and then Leo the lion right here so the exact same stars and then there's the virgo and then cancer crab over here hercules right here um the swan right here there's the head and the wings okay Pe uh pegasus um look at the andromeda this is andromeda's head right here but up he's upside down those are his legs and he's falling okay Oh, here's Aquarius right here, y'all. That's kind of cool. And here's Perseus, the guy with the hat and a wand. Okay, this is very... And he's hitting the foot of Andromeda, who was falling in the previous one. This is Ares Ram. This is Taurus right here, and this is the Pleiades, one of the horns of Taurus the bull. We don't see, we don't see Taurus as a bull when we look up, but that's what it looks like. And that's Orion right here. Okay, there's the giraffe. <clears throat> Gemini literally looks like two twins holding hands. The Cancer Crab looks like a crab upside down. See, those are the little tentacles and those are the eyes. The Unicorn right here. And there's Taurus the Bull again. Okay. Big Dog Sirius. There's the Dog Star Sirius right there. The Dog Star Sirius represents the chest of the full dog right there. Okay. And there's the Rabbit Hare. The two ears, his nose facing down, the two ears, and that's the rabbit hair. <clears throat> There's Orion, of course, the most obvious, the easiest one to find, Orion's belt. It's always the easiest one, so from there you can kind of gauge, well, there's Orion's belt, so a little to the left will always be Sirius. And above Orion's belt will always be Gemini. When you look up at Orion's belt, that's an easy kind of way to gauge the rest of the stars if you're just a beginner. To the right of Orion's belt, way to the right is the Pleiades, which in Taurus. Okay, there's a Hydra serpent, which is interesting, <clears throat> of course. And there's the Leo lion with his foot on the head of the serpent. What does that remind you of? The lion of the tribe of Judah, that the Book of Revelation says is Jesus. The lion Jesus has his. And he crushes the head of the serpent, which is the first prophecy in the entire Bible. Genesis 3.15. And I'll put enmity between thee and the serpent, and you'll bruise its head, and you'll bruise your heel. You'll wound the head of the serpent. Okay, and there's the cup. 
you know, that the serpent has to tempt all the wor world. The whore of Babylon is the influence of the serpent, obviously. There's Virgo again, <clears throat> right next to Hydra. There's the Libra scales. It literally looks like, a, you know, a scale system. There's the centaur, kind of interesting. And there's the Scorpio, scorpion. Okay, this is Ophiuchus. And this represents so much. It represents Moses splitting the Red Sea. Uh, it, it represents uh, a lot of different things. And once again, his heel is on the head of Scorpio, another type of reptilian serpent enemy, the sting of the Scorpio. So once again, the, the hero, Jesus, is crushing the head of the serpent. Okay, so that's two references, astrotheologically, to the Bible. And there's the Sagittarius Archer right here. That's his head. That's his hand pulling the bow back. Really interesting stuff. This is a lot easier to visualize this. And David Warner Matheson, I have to mention, is who introduced me, or who confirmed that these are the correct constellations. And you see the Capricorn goat right here, Capricorn? There's the goat head and there's the horn. There's the feet. It looks like a goat. Okay, y'all? <sighs> There's Sagittarius once again, the head. That could be the um, a horn as well, or it could be hands. Don't know. There's Aquarius. Looks like Aquarius. He even has the eye in the center. Some also consider that the mark of the beast, because the age of Aquarius is when the end times happens. And that's an indication of the mark of the beast. So I'm trying to pour out knowledge, the water of knowledge beforehand until that happens. And see, there's the Capricorn goat. Then Aquarius, and then we get to the Pisces right here, the two fish right here, right under the whale. And then there's Aries, Aquarius, Pisces, Aries. Okay, it's an Andromeda. Once again, Andromeda is right above Pisces. Cool, huh? Well, the cat thinks it's cool. There's the centaur, there's a wolf, there's the southern triangle. Okay, it's kind of cool. You know, just go back and forth. Pause. You know, go back and pause. You can see these images. Okay? You know, it's, it's kind of like the Grox. You have to train yourself to... You know, the and also this is the planets to scale, which I always love. Look how huge that sun is. Look how small the Earth is. Look how far away the moon is. Look how huge Jupiter and Saturn are. I, I just love when things are to scale. It's it's like eye candy to me. So 100,000 years ago, this is what the Big Dipper looked like. This is what it looked like today. And this is what it looked like in 100,000 years from now. So yeah, this star on the bottom is kind of moving towards the right, slowly but surely, because, you know, they're not fixed. They just move incredibly slow <laughs> from our human perspective. Um, but still, that's still a, a cool indication of how that stuff changes. Anyway, that's it for this video, y'all. I hope y'all liked it. Um, H.A. Ray, the constellations, the stars, and how we view them. This is the book to understand uh, what the shapes really are. Okay, there's the Aquarius water bearer, which is me, because I'm born February 10th. And the water I am bearing is the truth. Okay, and it's weird how Aquarius is the sign of astrology. And it's weird how I have Uranus in the 10th house because of the time I was born, not just the year and the month. And Uranus in the 10th house says, I'm a good astrologer. Okay, and then Jupiter and Pisces, like Nietzsche, my favorite philosopher, says we can zoom out and see the bigger picture. Okay, so all this stuff is a pattern, and you have to find out your pattern, your recipe, to find out why you are the way you are. Later.